Hello friends, it's Jama Malmi here and welcome to another scrapbook process video. Before we jump into the process today, I'm going to share with you two ways to create three by four photos. Now I've done an in-depth tutorial on this before, how I collage my prints to different sizes to print and how I organize them on my phone and how I print them on my Epson PM400. Today I'm going to show you two more ways that are completely free to uh, print your photos specifically at 3x4, although you could use these same techniques to print them at other sizes. So you can see here I've already got my photos cut apart to 3x4 and this is how they are originally. We're basically printing two photos on one 4x6 paper. Now I use the semi-gloss paper from Canon because I do print at home, but what I'm gonna show you today, you can save the files to send off to print as well. So let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so I have all of my video photography apps in one folder and you can see I have a lot of them. I don't actually use all of them, but what I'm gonna show you today is Canva and Project Life. So my preferred way to collage photos is actually pick frame and I've shown that in depth in another video, but I wanted to show these two other options because they're totally free and you don't have to have any type of subscription like you do with pick frame because with pick frame, it'll have a watermark on there if you don't pay for it. So first I'll show you Project Life. Some of you might be familiar with this already um, and it, this is an app for pocket scrapbooking. So you can go to create and then you can go to a collage page and that will allow you to make like a 12 by 12 pocket page which is really cool if you wanted to get it printed like from persnickety prints they print 12 by 12 prints actually very reasonably but today I'm going to show you we'll still go to create but we're going to go to four by six prints and then the first thing it pulls up is a four by six with two spots. So half of four by six would be three by four. So basically to create a three by four photo, we're just gonna collage two photos, taking up half each on a four by six. So you're really getting two photos for the price of one when you go to print these. So I will just tap into the first well, and then up here, I'll tap that little picture icon and then I'm gonna to go to recents because the ones I'm using are fairly recent and I will go here. Now, the only issue is I've got all of these series of photos and I have four picked out that I want to do and I have favorited them, but it doesn't show the hearts on here. So I'm actually gonna go back and I'm gonna to go to favorites and so then it will show me just the four favorites in this series. So I'll choose the first one here. Look at this goofy little guy. I gave my son um, a buzz cut. He hadn't had one in a long time. And this is the, his reaction after checking it out for the first time. So it was really cute. Okay, so then we'll just go over to this other side here and we'll do the same thing. And then it already pulled up this same folder, the same spot that I was in, which is handy and then we'll choose this second one. So it's fairly easy. The only thing I like better about pick frame that I use normally is that you can choose two at the same time and it will pull them both in at once. This one you have to go to one and then go to the other. They do make it pretty easy. As you saw, it still brings you to the same spot so it's not a huge deal. And um, then we can close this and just tap out of it and you have your two three by four prints there. So then you'll just go here to export and I'm gonna go to export and I wanna export it as an image and it's going to save it as, um, we'll go here to save image. So, uh, so now this is saved in my camera roll. So if I go here to my camera roll it's right here as the most recent one. And then this is just a JPEG image. You can send this to your home printer if you wanna print it um, at home, or you can send this just like you would a regular picture to get developed anywhere. It's the same thing as a picture file, a JPEG image. So now let's go to Canva. 
So I have a paid subscription, but I've logged out into my regular non-paid subscription. So this is now just the free version, and so you can do this. So what you're gonna do is go to the plus sign, and then you're gonna choose a custom size, and it defaults to pixels, but we want inches. So we wanna do that first. Otherwise, when you start typing in your six by four, it's going to give you an error and then you change this to inches later and then it converts this to inches and it's all wrong. So just go to inches first and then you can do six by four or four by six. I'm gonna do six by four, create a new design because that's the orientation of my photos, right? So six is the width. So if I wanted it to be, if I had two landscape orientation photos, I would do four by six because you want it to be skinnier and taller and then you're your three by fours are going to be landscape, right? And so by doing it this way, we've got the landscape, but when you divide it in half, each of those wells is going to be portrait. And that's what my photos are. So if you have other photos, just do it the other way. And if you have one that's portrait and one that's um, landscape, you can still choose one or the other and then just rotate one of them. So if you've got one portrait, put it here. If you've got one landscape, then you can rotate it and it'll just print sideways, but it doesn't matter because once you cut them apart, then it'll be fine. Okay, so now what we want to do is go to this plus sign and I'm going to go to camera roll. And it's easier to do this, I've found, on your phone. You can do it on your computer as well, but it's easier to upload photos that you already have on your phone when you're doing it in the app. But you could certainly send the photos if they're on your phone to your computer and then do it that way, but you have to upload them first. I just find it easier to do it in the app. So again, we don't see the hearts here, so I'm just gonna go up here to Recents. See how there's a little arrow, and down arrow? So I can choose the favorites. And then I can see, so I've already done these two, so now I need to do this one and this one, and it will let you add them both to the page at the same time. So what we'll do is we'll just drag it. We will drag them to the corners, and then I'm gonna pull one corner, and then you can see what the size is. So it kind of snaps. See how it kind of snaps there when I go like that? It snaps to the center. So if I drag this down, it snapped to the center. So you know that they're both three by four. And then see how there's the purple outline? This one is selected. You can't just zoom and crop with this. You have to actually double tap and then it opens the crop so then you can kind of zoom if you want. I want this one to be not super zoomed. I'm kind of off center. I wanna have a little room here on the side because I'm gonna be overlapping these a little bit in the layout. So I wanna have a little bit of room so we're not covering him, but I don't need so much sky. And then we'll do the same thing for here. I've double tapped so it opens the crop. I love how he, he was like looking on one side, looking on the other, so cute. And there we go. See if I'm happy. So he's a little bigger in this one, which is okay, because I don't want a ton of room over here. And I'm happy with that. Okay, we're gonna now go to export, and that's this little kind of box with the arrow pointing up. If you do, you could do this too, but then it doesn't let you choose your settings. I like to do this one here and then download. And then suggest it is a PNG file. You can tap this to change it. You can change this to a, P a JPEG if you want. I'm just gonna keep it as a PNG because it, it saves it just a little bit bigger. Um, and then I'm gonna hit download. So you wanna wait for it to finish. So when you get to this screen on this one, you don't actually have to hit save image. The last one I did, but this one, it's already saving the image. When it's all done, you can just leave this page as it is. When it's all done, then it will say that it's downloaded to your camera roll. You can even close that out. And there you go, saved to your camera roll. So now if we go out, we can see both of our 4x4 
four by six images. So now I'm gonna print these to my Epson PictureMate 400. So what I'll do is hit select, and I'll select these two, and hit this little arrow up button here, and then I can scroll down to print. And I'm gonna select print. It already knows my Epson is on and ready, so that's fine as is. I'm just gonna do one copy, four by six, print in color. I don't usually change any of these. I just go to media and quality, and then I wanna choose best. So I wanna make sure I do that, and then I usually do media type. I'm using semi-gloss paper, so I select that just to make sure that it knows what paper. I don't want it to auto-select. So now I'm gonna print, and it is going to print those two photos. I hope that was helpful for you and I should note that you can print in any size so those apps you can collage with um, you know six two by two photos two three by four photos you can do any size you want as however you want to configure it onto that four by six size and in project life there are other options as well some of them you have to pay for but the basic ones are free okay so let's dive into the project i have this fresh paint paper in front of me this is from a year or two ago and i absolutely loved it i only did a couple of layouts with it i had other plans in fact I even found these photos that I had printed and put inside my bag with this paper that I never got to scrapping from my son's fifth birthday, so over two years ago, um, for his Batman party. And I even saved the little decorations, but you can see that that goes really nicely with this collection as well. So I will just put these back because I've already decided I'm printing or uh, scrapbooking these today. So this fresh paint collection um, was so, so fun. It is still available, all of it is. There is this sticker sheet that comes with the paper pack and then there's these pocket cards too that have a lot of really fun designs that I'll probably incorporate. And then there's these two stamp sets too that are still available. This one is super fun. These ones have the coordinating dies. I'm not sure I'll use this one. Maybe that rainbow, that's kind of fun, or this exclamation point. But I have used this quite a bit because this dripping paint is really fun. The stars can be used for really anything and they have this fun um, like texture pattern in there. And I've already got a bunch of stamps, so some of those might work. So um, these photos, I'm gonna print, or I'm gonna use all four of them. I don't always use photos where they're so similar, but I figured by printing them smaller, it shows this progression. So I had just buzzed his hair and he doesn't often let me do that. So when he agreed to it, I had to jump on it right away. So this was the progression. He was kind of feeling his head. I was showing him, he wanted to see it in my phone. So I turned the camera around facing him in selfie mode and I was snapping pictures as he was using it as a mirror. So it was really fun. So this was him just feeling it for the first time. I should have done a before picture, but I didn't. But his hair was really long. He was complaining that it was going down to his eyebrows. So this was his summer buzz cut and this is him feeling his hair and then looking one way and then looking at the other side and then just really happy and giddy about this. So I thought that with his shirt being black and this bright blue that this paper was gonna work perfectly. So let's clean this up and get started on the page. Okay, I've got my paper on my Versamat already. That's gonna help me line things up. And I'm gonna play with the placement of my photos before I choose all of my papers. I'm pretty sure I want to work on a white background. One option is to do a grid like this. That's a very classic um, arrangement. We can do it right in the middle. We can do it offset with maybe a pattern paper down the side do it on the other side. But I was thinking more of a linear progression because that would show the progression of him looking at his hairdo. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go just straight across the page. And I was toying with if I want to kind of stagger them, um, but I think I wanna just actually go straight. And I do, I did cut these down just slightly by an eighth of an inch. So they're two and seven eighths inches wide by still four inches tall because I wanted to have a little bit of white in between. 
Now I was thinking that I could have this be my background. Actually, I think I'm gonna have this be right behind the photos and have like a torn edge up here and then have this maybe torn a little bit further down. And so the photos could be resting right on this here. But I don't know if I like the blue in between. I am just really partial to a white mat. I don't know what it is. If you um, like the colored mat, then go for it. But for some reason, I just really like a white mat and how it makes my photos pop. I think I need to trim it down this way a little bit. But I'm liking that and I'm thinking I'm going to tear this and then tear this maybe at an angle a little bit longer. I wanna see some of these paint drips. So maybe I'll even pull it down more and then tear it so we have some of the paint drips. And then this pattern here I thought would be fun to put behind that and that could be torn too and then have it a little bit longer than this and then we can build a couple embellishment clusters and our title and then I was also thinking I want to have like a torn edge behind the like have the base torn and then have a pattern behind there that's usually an afterthought when I do that like oh it's missing something and I'm going to do that as an afterthought but I think it would look nice with the tearing that we're going to do so I'm trying to think ahead and where am I going to want that do I want it over here or over here so I think I'm going to sort of lay things out keeping that in mind and I'm still going to tear that later where I need kind of a third point. So I'll probably have like embellishments, embellishments, and then a tear. So that's kind of your third point of a visual triangle to keep that, um, you know, the interest of the visual triangle. Or I can do here, here, and then maybe torn down here. I think I like the idea of this with torn up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear these papers. I'll go ahead and speed this up and then um, you'll see the rest of my process come together. So I went right in and started tearing my paper. Now, if you tear the paper toward you, you are going to get the white core showing. So see how that white core is kind of showing there? And that's the thought, that's the look I thought I wanted. But once I got it all done and started kind of ruffling it up, which I tried ruffling up with my fingernails, but I really don't have any fingernails right now, so it proved difficult and I will go in and use my scissors from now on. But I realized I didn't really want that white core showing, so I went back in and tore the other way, which is a little bit more difficult um, when you have a large piece of paper like this, so just be careful. Now, if you wanted to be more precise with your tearing, you can take a water brush and draw a line where you want that to tear. That's a tip I learned from Julie, but I wanted mine to be, I guess it's just a little bit more organic. I guess I didn't want to know exactly where I was going to tear it, but that's a great way to have more control. So then I'm going to layer up my second piece and I'm going to sort of just layer them together while I tear so that I can try to get it going in sort of the same direction, but just, um, you know, taller or just sticking out a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of that and then ruffle up with my scissors here and then rub with my fingers and add a little bit of dimension and distressing and all that. Tearing your paper is a fun way to just kind of give a whimsical look and really fun to kind of tear and it just gives such a different look than cutting your papers straight. I love doing it both ways, but I thought that these papers and these pictures lended themselves well to this tearing. So this one went a little bit more crazy than I intended, but I actually like how it worked out because that piece that was that sticks down more on the left side um, is where my title is going to fit perfectly. So I'll go around and uh, ruffle up the edges with my scissors. I like how we can see the paint drips. And then that second piece, I um, cut so that I could have the full 12 inch because I had circles cut out of one side. So I had to rearrange and make sure I had a full 12 inch piece going across. So I've got this all done, ruffle it up a little bit more, and then we'll move on to the next part.
For my title, I decided to use the Moxie alphabet. I love this alphabet and have used it many times before. I love that it has a die to cut out the stamped image. I did it a little bit backwards than I normally do. I die cut first because I wasn't sure what color I wanted to stamp it. So I'm just gonna let it live on the page here while I figure out what else I want on the page. I'm trying out some of these pocket cards and those two that I had left I thought maybe, but I ended up not using them. And then once I had a few things out, I got out some stickers and some of my other die cuts that were already stamped and thought, you know what, I think I want to stamp my title in black. So I pulled out my archival black ink pad. That is the most vivid dark black. It does stain your stamps just a little bit, but I like how dark the black is. So I very carefully lined up the stamped image over my die. My head did get in the way because I had to get it right over, so I cut that part out. But make sure your stamps are very seasoned. You saw me kind of rubbing it onto my hand to get any uh, fuzz or manufacturing gunk off. Now, most of these stamps are very well loved, but I like to just do that anyway out of habit. And then test it on scrap paper a couple of times until you get a good image. I also leave the stamp on the paper for just a couple moments to let that ink soak in. So some of the other stamped images that I did, I did a two-tone technique where I stamped it into one color, the lighter color first, and then rolled the edges into a second color. So like this one, I used clover first and then rolled it into the capri. It's hard to see the capri because it's not a whole lot darker, but I love the result that you get from that two-toned rock and roll stamping. Now, before I start arranging all my embellishments on the page, I like to pick out a bunch of things that I think that I'm going to use and um, have them just kind of at the ready. So I created this little embellishment book a little bit ago, and I'm finding it very useful. And I'm actually using a bunch of my older embellishments that were just kind of forgotten. And I have a video planned showing you how I did this, but I have everything sorted by color. So I'm just going through and pulling out some things that I think think that I might use. This is all arranged by color. So I'm going to pull out a little red piece here. And then I noticed on the um, yellow and orange page that I had a lot of stars I could use. I decided not to pull those out yet, um, but I'm just going to keep that filed in the back of my mind in case I need more filler. So now I have some stickers from that sticker sheet that I took the stick off of with my anti-static bag already and then some stamps that I already die cut and stamped out and I'm just going to play with the arrangement around the page. I have sped this part up quite a bit because this video is getting a little bit long, but I wanted to show you some of my process. I'm starting with the bigger images first and kind of working around those. So I put the bigger images down and then sort of arrange some of the smaller images. I like to overlap things and have some of the smaller images on top of bigger images and tucked behind and all of that to create these little embellishment clusters. This is my favorite part about scrapbooking. I love the embellishing process and I love having fun layering pieces and so I spend quite a bit of time doing this. This little piece here says love this guy and I just thought it was so perfect. I didn't love the shape of it. I kind of had a little bit trouble um, fitting it in a way that I liked but in the end I like how it ended up working out. Um, and I love the little love this guy um, saying because it is so perfect. If you're enjoying this video so far or have learned something, I hope that you'll hit that like button so YouTube knows that you've enjoyed this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so so you don't miss any upcoming scrapbooking videos. I post twice a week in hopes to inspire you to create and get your own scrapbooking done and give you some good ideas that you can use in your own scrapbooking. I've decided that my little torn background is going to go in the bottom right and I decided that because of the way that the tear happened in the 
um, paper around my photos. It just kind of looked best down there. So I just tore a little piece out and I'm going to test out which papers I want back there. I wanted to add a little bit of color. So I decided to go with this kind of spray painted looking one and I chose a piece that I cut out using the uh, making sure that the colors that I wanted showing were all showing and then I'll create a little embellishment cluster down there. I'm also going to ruffle up the edges of that. Now this skateboard and little fire I thought was so fun. Of course there's no skateboard in the photo but um, there's also no shoes in the photo but I thought that these were all things that really represented my son since this is all about him. He loves skateboarding and scootering. He loves his vans. <laughs> so I thought this was all appropriate to use on a page about him. And then I just thought that that rainbow was so fun to put on the skateboard. It was kind of unexpected so it was a happy accident when I thought, oh, what will this look like here? I used some um, Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers to color that rainbow off camera, by the way, and I'll list the colors that I used down below. I used my swatch card to make sure that they matched all of the colors in this paper collection. Okay, now what you're seeing me doing is testing out this background elements stamp set to see which stamps I wanted to use. I knew that with this whole like paint theme, I wanted to have it look like there was some paint and splatters coming out from behind that background. So I wanted it to be a little bit controlled. I actually thought about using a spray and then thought, eh, I think I wanna want this to be a little more controlled. So this is a um, background stamp from the background element stamp set and you can see I was off there <laughs> I was a little bit off so I'm just going to restamp it a little bit further down I just want it peeking out from behind there just a little bit just so we have a little bit of that lemonade yellow showing and then I'll do the same in the opposite side on the top and then for the splatters I tried a couple of different splatter stamps and went with this one with the capri ink and I am very happy with these color choices. I like the yellow, the bright yellow that pops from behind the black. And then it just seemed like this Capri would go well because of the Capri in the paper that is backing my photos. So I did some splatters behind each of my embellishment clusters and kind of coming out from parts behind the background paper. So I'm just showing stamping a couple of places, but I put it in quite a few places and you'll see close-ups here in just a little bit. But for my journaling, I decided to use the journal strip stickers. I use these quite a bit. A lot of times I don't add my journaling on camera and I do it later, but I wanted to show you these again because I haven't shown you in a while. I love these strips because because they're just stickers and you can just go ahead and write out what you want to say and then you can snip them to the lengths that you want so you don't have to think about how much space you want each line to be you just keep writing and then you can um, cut it and make the lines as long as you want and if you don't tack them down really hard you can move them so I kind of tack them down lightly usually and then when I'm all done I'll secure them I decided to add a little bit of clear shimmer brush in a few spots so the camera probably won't pick that up but just know that in real life this adds a very beautiful subtle shine. So I'm going to show you a little close up of all of this and if you want to see still shots then head over to my Instagram and Facebook pages. They are linked down below as well as all of the supplies that I used today if you're interested in anything. There's also a whole new catalog that just launched and I showed a layout using some of that last week and I'll have that on the screen right here for you to watch next. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.